All right, hello. You're listening to the Nerd Edification Hour on Alternation Radio. I'm Caleb. And I'm Rachel. Oh, good. Your microphone does work. It does work. It was It wouldn't work. It is functioning. (laughs) I hit my elbow before we started. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) you're a funny bone. My funny bone. All right, so today we have uh, theme park and movie news. Yes, we do. It's kind of weird. It's weird, but hey. It's a weird combination. Uh, well, I guess some ways rides and attractions are kind of like little miniature movies. I you guess, just... or the other way around, movies, if they're in one of those interactive theaters, can be rides. And for those of you tuning in on video, I am wearing a Pokemon hat, and it looks really hilarious with the uh, headphones on, <laughs> yes. by the way. So this is interesting. I might actually take it off. <laughs> and, uh, also, also, I got my precious, precious Hyrule Warriors Link scarf right here next to me. On my microphone stand is very great. I waited a whole month for it, and I don't care if I live in Florida. I'm going to use it when winter comes. Uh, but anyways, uh, moving on, the rest of the show will have uh, video game news, and then with um, your nerd vocab, and then technology news uh, taking up the and rear. And science. Oh, and science. Technology yes. and science, because they are basically the same thing, kind of. Well, wow, they go together a lot. And... Uh, Maybe Jeremy will be here later. Maybe oh, yeah, later. he's on the way. He's he's on the way, Jeremy. So, uh, Rachel, I have a pretty cool story to share. I just want to, I just want to gush a little bit. Okay, and gush away. A, it's good my sir. show. Gush anyways, away. So you have no choice in the matter. How dare you? <laughs> so, all right. So I'm at work. This was about uh, Wednesday. You know, a couple of days ago, and I'm doing my chores. All of a sudden, this lady comes up to me. She's like, uh. Do I know you from somewhere? And I'm like, yeah, you probably saw me on TV when you flipped through channels. She's like, oh, no, wait, you do that, you do that show, right? I watch your show all the time. I was like, really? You know, I was just like, ah. And then she was saying like, yeah, her whole family sits around when the show comes on and stuff. She likes what we talk about. And oh, that's stuff. awesome. I was like, oh, look, oh, look. shout out to you, mysterious woman. Hold on, no, 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 hold on. Oh, oh, I got shout outs. Oh, you got shout outs. outs. This is new, guys. Because this I'm is a new. nice person and because I like my fans. I, I didn't know I had fans. I was like, oh, I have fans. <laughs> you have fans. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you, uh, Jacob Hash and um, Merlo Hash. I think M I R L O. I, I think so, yeah. Merle, That's how you pronounce it. Merlo Hash, thank you for telling me that you like my show. It's very you nice. guys it's very are, good feedback. You guys are. Totally awesome. <laughs> totally awesome. Oh, yeah, and yeah. they said uh, less Rachel, more Caleb because they like my face. I'm just kidding. <laughs> totally kidding. Totally joking. I am I am heartbroken <laughs> now. I am heartbroken. Oh, it's totally fine. Uh, so anyways, Rachel, what's going on with Bioware and the theme parks and stuff like that? Was, oh, goodness. Was okay, so... I will admit when I first read this, I just saw the bio and my brain immediately went to Bioshock and then like, oh my God, a Bioshock ride. And then I read it and was severely disappointed. But Bioware <laughs> is um, has revealed that there's going to be this Mass Effect themed ride that is going to be opening at California's Great America in 2016. For those not in the know, uh, Great America is in Santa Clara, California. It's a Theme park, I guess. Uh, I didn't know that. I, I, I don't I had, live in California. I had heard of it before, like when, you know, those theme park shows come on on the travel channel and they showcase all the cool rides and then you get immensely jealous. Like, I didn't even know that there was this kind of Universal Studios-like um, park in Australia it's just literally all of the old cartoons and all of the old, like, rides. And they you, they have the dang Scooby-Doo haunted house that was used in the live-action Scooby-Doo movie. How'd, how'd they get that there? Yeah, no, that's that's what they use. It's literally there. Huh. But, um, so I learned a lot about that recently over the weekend when they, when they aired one of those. But anyway, the ride is described as a dynamic 3D adventure, and it will be hosted by a live performer and take guests on a journey to a distant planet where they will face off against a larger, larger-than-life foes and fight to save the day. And it's going to be, it's going to be Mass Effect themed, though. So... Mass Effect theme, and my my phone decided to say hello. Yes, I, 
Okay, sure. I, I did. I, it did. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I don't. I don't know how I feel about that. To be entirely honest, I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I love I, theme parks, like, but I'm not too big on Mass Effect. Me neither. I'm not. I wouldn't know how that would uh, feel. Maybe Jeremy would know. Yeah, Jeremy if, might um, know. Jer- Jeremy actually <laughs> just arrived, so yippee for us. I know he didn't want to disturb the <laughs> recording process, but you know what? We're not Holy. professionals, so just just, just come on in. <laughs> Doesn't even. We're not getting paid for this, so just, just hop in. Okay. Uh, so is your mic working? I don't know. Uh, no idea. Oh, wait. Oh, oh goodness. Booyah. How about now? Hello. No. Huh? No. Nope. Right there we go. All right. Minus. Oh. 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 Okay. All oh. right. I fixed what? it. Cool. I had to press buttons. Oh. We're off to a very professional start oh, here yes. in the Nerd Edification <laughs> Hour on Alternation Radio. Just saying. I had to have car maintenance done, so I'm back. Oh. <laughs> that All is right. a valid excuse, sir. Hey, Jeremy. How do you like my scarf? My precious, your face. precious, precious scarf. So, um, <laughs> hey, Jeremy, smile. since you're here now, why don't you tell us about the uh, Gambit Director news thing again? Because uh, there's, there's there's more de- there's look, more development on that. Look, now. we're following Friends. something up like we never ever do, but we're doing it because. All right. So earlier this yeah. month, word came that Gambit Director Rupert Wyatt had dropped out of the Fox slash Marvel film due to an unspecified scheduling conflict, as it normally is. <laughs> Gambit, which will star Channing Tatum was suddenly in danger of not making its October 7th, 2016 release. But now the Hollywood Report says that Wyatt left the film after the studio began to question whether Wyatt was in fact committed to moving ahead of the project. A source says of the filmmaker, ambivalence is not a good way to go into an expensive movie. <laughs> well then. It certainly isn't. <laughs> also not to go into it without the support of the actual comic book maker. <laughs> Which is even more important. Mind you, Fox. I mean, they've had those issues before, um, but in not only with Marvel stuff and et cetera, et cetera, but when books are turned into movies, there, oh, yes. there are horror stories on that. <laughs> but saw, what was it? Abraham Lincoln vampire. <laughs> oh God! The book was great. The no, movie was terrible. <laughs> That's no, what I heard. I didn't, I didn't get the, around. To the, it. the script was okay. But well, like I said, the book itself was actually really well done. I enjoyed it. Yeah, the movie with me and my wife watched it. We're just like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> I heard it. It did kind of have some classic lines in there, though, that people do remember. Well, they cut like a bunch of the stuff out, changed they, everything around. The ending was completely different. I mean, they just went to town on it. That is so stupid. Yeah, things happen. So it was the literal cash in. All right, pretty much. So in two thousand nine, during the early days of current wave of superhero cinema Zack Snyder bought brought brought Helen Almero's acclaimed comic Morris, book Alan, Alan, Alan Moore's you just the I nerd can't even, is gonna come you can't right even at read you. you know what go ahead okay. I can't even I tried <laughs> you got this well, I tried anyway Zack Snyder brought Alan Moore's acclaimed <laughs> comic book limited <laughs> series Watchmen to life for Warner Bros <sighs> go right ahead Caleb oh my gosh <laughs> so Wait a minute, I lost my place. His on, best work. <laughs> Maury's work. See, I can't even do this correctly. <laughs> Maury. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, hold on. Um, more. <laughs> so Moore's work, work is a, is a okay. beast of interconnected <laughs> and referential storylines, creating quite a challenge for Schneider while making it all the more impressive that he pulled the film off as well as he did. Uh, while the feature did fairly well with critics, it wasn't a runaway hit at the box office. Many credited this result to unwieldy nature of the story, which would be uh, conceivably be better suited for serial adaptation. Yeah, the Basically, rumor is that they're going to be trying to bring Watchmen in some way, shape, or form to HBO, which it, it is actually better suited for that because of the content of the um, the work. I think a lot of this would be more of like backstory stuff kind of leading up to it, more extended into what they did during those time periods. Exactly. I don't know if anyone has seen the Watchmen movie, but I saw Mm, it in high school um, and with um, a mixed group of friends that I probably should not have seen it with because it was just not... It was a, quite a I surprise. I love it. I, I, like I loved... No, I loved it, but you have to see it with the right people. That's the thing. That's not with me. Well... <laughs> that's the right people. You, your, you yourself, and you are... And my wife. Amanda good. liked it. <laughs> but, no, I, I agree with them trying to put them... Att- putting it on HBO because it's... 
better suited for the content. And yeah, it's got, I mean, literally, if you go by the time in the comics, there's decades of backstory they can go into to expand upon, and they kind of hint at little things they can include. Exactly. I imagine exactly. it's on HBO, so they can just go all out with the graphicalness of it. Yeah. And that's one you have to. to. I mean, you really do. <laughs> which I'll, I will probably avoid that because I'm not really a big fan of that kind of stuff. I'm just saying. Just the, yeah. just the, That's okay. I'll watch the heck out of it. Me okay. too. You, you, you <laughs> we'll watch can, it enough you guys for can yeah. all of us. You can just film me but, in. All right. And this, now this, this, this next bit of news is really neat. <laughs> I love it. I love. Uh, star Ryan Reynolds, the Joker. He's such a jokester. Um, stole he's not a, actually the Joker. No, he's not. <laughs> but I bet he could be if he really wanted to. That's his next role. Mm. He's gonna, He'd be right. a terrible Joker, but he could be if he wanted to. Yeah. Uh, he stole a Deadpool costume from the set of the film that just wrapped <laughs> recently. Um, he loved wearing it, and he just has to run away with one. And he's probably going to get in trouble for saying that he but this guy, got this one. But this thing kind of happens but, all the time anyways. Uh, yeah. Um, at the end of a huge film saga most of the main actors are allowed to take away a kind of a a souvenir to remember by but ryan reynolds really stole the cake by uh taking a suit um his excuse is i've waited 10 years to do this movie and i'm so i'm leaving with a suit that's um that's that's Pretty that wow. Yeah. Um, I I could I could yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> despite the long road and limited budget, Reynolds says he's very pleased with the re- final results. Um, he says sometimes the long game pays off. I never thought it would come to fruition. It's been an uphill battle, but there was such an ap- appetite for the char- for that character on screen. Um, and he says that w- we did it with relative pittance compared to most superhero films, but. It really allowed us to explore the character. So when you see the movie, you would think that it's a hundred fifty million dollar film, but it's actually not at all. So oh, well, wow, yeah. Ryan yeah. Reynolds, you just okay. kind of so, uh, <laughs> kind of uh, no, uh, through through us the secrets there. Yeah, just well, I mean, that given out there. just given how Deadpool's character is and how self referentially is and how he kind of breaks a fourth wall, he could actually could have just made that joke during the filming. Like he could have actually been wearing it, and be like, I don't think I'm gonna take this home after this movie's done. <laughs> <laughs> And we, just fit in and would just kept going. To, be, to be entirely honest, they might have. That would be great. He's like, oh, the suit's great. I'm just going to take it home. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Moving uh, on to the next one. Uh, to Disney now. Yeah. Ah. Who? I mean, I don't really. I don't well, how about. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, You've got kids. You Disney. like Disney. Yeah. Disney's you know all right. Disney. Yeah. Disney now owns Marvel and Star Wars and most of my childhood. <laughs> so after nearly a decade, Disney is finally at work on a sequel to the hit 2007 film Enchanted, according to Collider.com. The working title for the film is Disenchanted, <laughs> though plot well. details are still keep being kept under wraps <laughs> well, as the script is still in the works. Well, that's certainly dark. Oh. Yeah, it's, <laughs> well, it's Disenchanted. It's just unhappy. Everyone dies. The end. Collider also reports that the production hasn't been given the green light just yet, uh, but blending animation, live action, the original Enchanted film starred Amy Adams as Giselle, a princess who was forced out of the kingdom of Andalusia. And into contemporary New York City, which is always just a fun place to end up. Oh, yes. Definitely. Oh, yeah. That's where all the movies So are. much New York. Uh, the film also starred Patrick Dempsey, James Marston, um, Indina Menzel, Timothy Spall, Rachel Covey, and Susan Sarandon. I hope I pronounced all those right. Uh, you were very close. Oh. It's it, Indina oh, better Menzel. Better than I could have. Dang it. Yeah, you were very close. Well, you did better than John Travolta. Touche. <laughs> Enchanted featured its corporate Broadway songwriters Alan Menken and Stephen Schwartz, who received Oscar nominations for three of their tunes. You know, so, wait, you know what? I it was a realized? hilarious film. What? This the Enchanted came out in two thousand seven. Mm, yep. Yeah, time has moved on. Time has. I'm so flown. old. Yeah. I'm so old. Okay. <laughs> sure. Jeremy's giving this look. Dude, He's I remember like, when Transformers was brand new. You know, new. You know with, all these, brand new. with all these live action Disney stuff, you know, really, I mean, this was in 2007, but it's really like gained steam. I mean, now they're doing a live adaptation of The Jungle Book. Uh, the that sword and, good, too. Yes, it looks good. <laughs> and The Sword and the Stone is getting a live adaptation. Apparently, the script mm-hmm. or something is going to be written by the same... I could probably by, like The Sword and the Stone. I want... I don't no, know. Let me, let I me, could probably yeah. get on Let that. me finish, though. No. The script writer... One of the script writers is apparently the same guy who does stuff for Game of Thrones, so it's going to be really Bloody. interesting. But oh, no, yeah. <laughs> but the uh, Jungle Book one, though, um, they've changed a lot of some of the characters around. Like the the Python is now played is played by a woman, and that's really creepy but awesome at the same time. And you know what? I hope they better have kept the vultures. 
I so wait, think they so did. Wait. I showed part of it, but because so the vultures Ka... are essentially the Beatles. They made Ka girl. Yeah. Either that, or it's just a woman's voice, and it's still a male snake. But regardless, anyway, it's still a it's, giant. It's snake. still a giant snake. But <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. I have no uh, idea. But you know, okay with, with, with all these live adaptations coming now, it's. I'm just waiting for a gigantic live movie where all the Disney princesses come together and, like, just eliminate some giant villain. So Kingdom Hearts Pretty live much. action. Yeah, but not it's with... It's called Disney Infinity. Yeah. You have to yeah. pay for that. <laughs> yeah, no, but as a, as a movie, you know, I'm just... That's that's what I'm waiting for them to do. Well, if you buy like, all those Disney Infinity figures, then they'll be able to afford to make a movie. <laughs> well, a lot then, of people buy them. And then Yoda and Darth Vader will come in and then... Uh, Hulk I don't know. I'm, that's home. honestly. I'm, bring in cars I'm, <laughs> I'm just waiting for like some type of like in Lego Dimensions. Oh wow, f- Dimension yeah. Rifts to open up and all the princesses get, getting together and yeah. Except Disney battling. will have Disney nothing Infinity to do with that. Disney Infinity the yep. movie. Mm-hmm. Disney Infinity. Disney the movie. Infinity the movie. There we go. We just gave them the idea. But yeah, the Sword <laughs> and the Stone one. I'm I'm iffy on how. I'm sure they can do great sp- uh, special effects. I'm just curious how it's going to be because it was so well suited for animation. Right. It was. You're right. Okay, but wow, that was quite a bit of a movie news. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was. What so, is uh, our song we have, Caleb? A uh, song is one we actually have not heard in quite a long time, and I really mean it this time. Okay. You don't make fun of me whenever I say we haven't heard in a long time. It's only been two weeks. But it is uh, cr- the Crossing Fields Japanese version. You guys oh, good. That? Yeah, that's been it's quite, been, a, quite yeah. a few months, actually. Yeah, exactly. See, I know. I got this. See, I know. And... Uh, Next up, we'll talk about video game news uh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll be right back here on the Nerd Edification Hour on Alternation Radio. And we are back here on the Nerd Edification Hour on Alternation Radio. I am Rachel, and I have next to me... Jeremy. Yes. On time this time. And... (laughs) In front of us, we have... Caleb, and I love my scarf. Yes, have he, I told you guys that I love this scarf? He really loves that scarf. I really do, and if anything were to happen to it, I would probably die. Because my, I, I my often, soul is now inside the scarf. I often think I the same thing say. about my Ray-Bans, and, and now it's, uh, now it's you know, with the latest episode of Doctor Who, he has sonic sunglasses. I haven't seen those yet. <laughs> I'm so Son- fun to pick so, up the new season. Like everywhere he looks, he sees Sonic the Hedgehog, the kind of Sonic glasses. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Just so he puts it on, he sees rings, rings and everywhere. It just rings and one ups and chili dogs all over the place. And he and goes insane. Slowly. Gotta go fast. But, <laughs> you're not kidding. But but now we're on to the video game news. Yep. Ah. Yeah. So starting out, we're going to talk about Pokemon a little bit. The Hooray! Pokemon. Pokemon. Gotta catch so, them all. One of the great pains of Pokemon is was and is kind of the transfer process. And it's still yes, it still is very painful when you have to go and you have to upload them to the bank. Yeah. You have to go to the bank. And you, you know. Yeah. Generation there. swaps were unavailable on the Nintendo DSi. Um, and they had to be, or they had to like the swaps had to be handled through this really tedious increments of the, six Pokemon at a time. Yeah, you had to have and, two. You had to have two DSs, and you had to right. have them in like separate yeah. ones. Yeah, and it was often yeah. a chore to get your old teams moved from one game to the other. While that problem has been alleviated with uh, the Pokemon Bank, the announcement of Pokemon Go and rumors about the NX has fans questioning the possibility of sharing creatures between smart devices and Nintendo hardware. The uh, CEO and president of the Pokemon company um, (laughs) wants actually this to be a reality, and I'm skipping over his name because I do not want to butcher it terribly. Um, In a recent interview with uh, Famitsu... I believe it's his last name is pronounced Ishihara, uh, expressed a desire to extend the services of Pokemon Bank and Pokemon Global Link to devices such as the NX. Using the almighty power of the cloud, mm. Ishihara dreams of a world where players can call a Pokemon down to use in a game on any platform and send them away when they're done. There was no specific mention of smart devices exactly, but the existence of Pokemon Go makes a strong case for the utilization of those platforms in the future as well. So I'm wondering, can I transfer the ones in my Ruby and Sapphire or my, what was the last one, X and Y? Yeah. Before that, can I transfer that to the Go service or is that like a new... 
Uh, well, Do, with with this not? with yes, this program no, no, no. that he dreams to make, yes, but they haven't made it yet, okay, so I can't well, tell you whether or not that's I mean, actually going to happen. Because cool Pokemon yeah. Go launches next year. <laughs> yeah. So. Yep. So I got an army of Pokemon. I'm just like, yeah, I know. I <laughs> just like, I'm just thinking. I'm just yeah. thinking of all the the um, people who spend a lot of time in their homes, not doing much travel or going out and about. This Pokemon Go thing is going to be like, wait a minute, I have to go find that Charmander that's three hundred feet from my house. Go out in the sunshine. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, do so, you think we'll find like Trubbish or any kind of poison type near the dump or something like that? <laughs> do you think that'd be pretty awesome? I think. Hey, I think. On. I think you're giving a little them a little bit too much credit on location. Ooh, even better. I know we have like a scrapyard around here with I, like metals I, and stuff I, like I that. I think. I think. I. Th- I, we found like Magnemites and everything like I that. I think oh you're gosh. giving them too much credit. No, they yeah. should do that. Yeah. They should do that, guys. Come on, right. get on Jeremy, it. tell us about Square Enix's weird pre-order stuff. Yeah, oh, this yeah. whole monstrosity, thankfully, is going away. Square Enix's reward-based pre-order system for Deus Ex Mankind Divided has been canceled following negative consumer response. A post on the game's official site explains the thinking behind both the cancellation and the augment your pre-order campaign itself. First announced by the publisher in August, the program offered tiered rewards. Each pre-order tier pushed or uh, offered new rewards to customers. More pre-orders would unlock further benefits, leading up to the final tier, which would push the game's official release date forward by four days. Uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided is the latest AAA game to hold its biggest fans in contempt. <laughs> when it was first conceived, the post says, Square Enix and developer IDOS Montreal wanted the program to give you more choices about what you received in terms of pre-order incentives. Citing dissatisfaction with the program to give you more... Um, yeah, dissatisfaction with the past region-specific pre-order rewards. Despite their good intentions, however, the companies quickly noticed that this approach created even more frustration than before, resulting in a resounding amount of negative feedback. Well, so, I thought it was pretty so, much one of the dumbest ideas. This is not the first time tiered, um, tiered like DLC and stuff like that has All been right, used. I'm, for for on. for example, specifically. Uh, well, it's the first time in this way. Like Call of Duty had tiers. Yeah. Where they would build it up, but they were like, they're all coming out. It's just if you pre-order early, you'd get more of them. But it didn't actually affect how many people had to pre-order. It's when you pre-ordered it. Yeah, well, this, um, I know for, for and this is just on Steam, for the new Tales of Zisteria game, if you pre-order it on Steam, depending on how many people pre-order, you get more stuff. Now, regardless of when you pre-ordered, um, you still get every all the same stuff as everybody else but like i think they um the number of pre and it wasn't a high number either like the um all of the pre-orders for that game specifically all of the um incentives for however many people pre-ordered have already been unlocked except the last one which is a free copy of tales of symphonia on huh. steam and that's the last thing the rest of them is like you know costumes and s- stuff like that so as long as whoever's pre-ordering gets the same thing as everyone else regardless when you pre-ordered you know if it's oh so you don't get a free copy of game because people didn't pre-order enough i mean cool that why is... no but i mean you I know even steam is kind of putting a frown on stuff like that because it's saying hey if you don't pre-order this game before any reviews come out or you get to see anything about it you're going to miss out on this stuff so we're kind of forcing you to have to do this yes but yeah, I mean, but with, also, with the tiered thing, it's like, hey, hey, friend, I know you like Deus Ex. You should totally, you know, it's kind of like... Well, they're taking content and going like, if enough of you don't buy this blindly, we're going to keep this content away from you. Pretty much. But, and that's uh, kind of a jerk move to yeah, do. Yeah, for I mean, Square Enix, yes, because that, but on the Tales one, on that argument, though, Tales of Symphonia is already out. You can get it on the PS3. It's It's been out for a very, 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 yeah, very, very long time. Yeah, about content from yes. another game before, yes. though. I mean. Oh, yeah, I know that, but, like, that sort of thing. But in in my mind, as long as everybody gets the same thing, it really shouldn't matter. I mean, you didn't have the game anyway, so you're not going to get it, so how is it really hurting you? You didn't lose anything. You just didn't get something. I don't know. It's I mean, especially stuff like look at the uh, Batman Arkham Knight. How that blindly they were like, all right, push this, you can get all this stuff, and do it. And then the PC version so broken, <laughs> they had to take it off and not even sell it until I think later this month it's supposed to come back on there. But people that pre-ordered yeah. were like, 
tough. You're stuck with it. We're not doing Pretty refunds much. or anything. Yeah. You yeah. have Wait. to have it. Yeah, but that's that's something like they promised and then taking it away. This is just something. But it's pretty if, common in PC lately. Yeah, a lot in of the PC, games that come yes. Out have been but really messed up. Like, like I said, well, if, One Piece Pirate Warriors 3, I'm just saying it's a very fun game. <laughs> Tony Hawk 5. It's broken. Oh, my gosh. Tony Hawk 5. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Why is this not on the list? I'm just wondering. I don't know, but we need to Tony do it. Tony Hawk 5 is completely broken, by the way. We need to do a whole segment one day of all the brokenness in some games that have come Call out recently. Broken, broken segment. Where <laughs> everything Early broken. versions of Skyrim and Oblivion. <laughs> but, yeah. Have you guys ever thought to yourself that, boy, the PS4 is great, but I just wish it had stickers? No. I, <laughs> I still haven't even turned mine on in never, a while. <laughs> like, I don't even have a PS4. Like, I'm still well, trying to destroy my intestines, trying to eat Taco Bell to get one. Well, the... <sighs> The update 3.0 came out this week, and it added a feature that fans have actually been asking for. It's actually kind of funny. Um, have you been asking for it, Yes, Rachel? I haven't been asking for it, but oh. other people have. Oh, okay. um, stickers. Stickers are now in there. You can send... Um, there's actually, like, little stickers of... Uh, the uh, the guy from Uncharted doing various things and him reacting to things. Yes. Do, uh, do we have stickers? Does the nerd edification hour have stickers on there of us doing various things? Why, why would we be? Why would we be on there, Caleb? Why wouldn't why we, we be on there? Okay. Exactly. Why and, not? But in any case, it added more features than just stickers. It added um, actually um, communities, which is you know how in certain <laughs> games you can have like in Destiny you can have a, a clan and you can also have party chats and stuff like this. This is like a friends list within a friends list almost. Like it kind of puts all your um, I, I friends would, together in one area that you often play with, so they're more easily accessible as opposed to not. I, I can barely manage just the regular friends, I, friends within friends that would I, I wouldn't be able to keep track of it. Like yeah, and it's it's kind of cool. And then there's this also um, fe- there's this other feature now that I've been waiting for it. I haven't found it yet because I haven't played my PlayStation in about a week. Because I've been busy doing other things. <laughs> um, well, you know, life gets you sometimes. Oh, yeah. And so, but when I went on there to update um, a couple days ago, I read the, you know, the the release notes. And there's a thing that says permission to, like, watch broadcast. So, I know at the very beginning of when PlayStation was being developed and when it, right before launch, there was supposed to be a feature where you could tune into your friends playing games whether or not they were playing it on Twitch or not. And so now there's this thing called permission to watch gameplay. So you could watch your friends play a game. You can tune into their gameplay um, without having to take over their gameplay, which is what was happening. Um, which was one of the other features, which I think was pointless because actually there's oh, been some problems with that. Yeah. Oh no, it's <laughs> it's it's, it's, all based. it's all permission based. It's all permission based. Well, it's not even that. I'm just talking about like the amount of bandwidth because I I have enough trouble right now trying to get Comcast where I can do Twitch properly. But if I have people just randomly just logging into well, stuff I'm trying to play, I'm like, no. Well, no, it's not them randomly logging in, Jeremy. It's they well, no, ask like you permission. You s- if right, you don't I mean, give them permission when they request it, then they can't access it. I just want it off period so I don't have well, to worry about stopping my game to tell someone, no, I don't want to do this. I'm in the middle of playing something. Well, you probably don't have to stop to tell them no. If you don't respond, then they're not. Then they, if, they, if they keep spamming you, then that's rude. But that's their <laughs> own thing. But you can probably turn it off. I just like that feature because... No, it's it's a good feature. I'm just saying I would probably shut it off just because bandwidth, that would yeah. just kill it. Well, I mean, I like I, I think it's a cool option mainly because I I don't buy actually too many games. I'll buy maybe two, three games out of the year, whereas some people will buy 10 or 15. Um, yeah. And so there's some times where I don't know if I'm going to like a game. So. Uh, my, most but of my you won't friends get the pre-order bonuses if you don't do it. I don't time. really care. Um, the pre-order. Yeah, no. Look one of like, so I don't know if I want it until I see it played. And sometimes watching gameplay on YouTube isn't enough. I want to actually see somebody I know oh, play it. Me, so, you want me to play on? I could put something on. You YouTube would lose. Hey. Between, between friends, I think it would actually be a really good one if yeah. it's just random people. No, it's and you're not. You have to keep telling people no. To, if no. I gave a new I'm thinking game or it's something. only. I'm thinking it's only accessible to those on your friends list. Like, oh, so and so is playing the new Uncharted game. I want to watch him play it. Let's see if I can. That gotcha. sort of thing. That's what I think it is. At least that's what I'm led to believe from it. I haven't found it yet. But um, I'll report on that next week when I try to test it. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> Alrighty then. Well. That'll be it for all the video game news, and up next we'll have your technology and science. There's a little, there's quite a bit. There is long, quite a bit. 
with your nerd vocab, and they'll probably wrap up the show. Yay! And we'll do our social media push a push thing. And uh, yeah, so during the break, we're gonna play uh, Into the Night, which is like uh, Nickelback and Carlos Santana, I believe. That's I believe. a weird combination. It's yeah, I don't know, but uh, but we'll it see. could be cool. Yeah, okay. mm-hmm. I think I think it's a good song. And we'll be right back here on the Nerd Edification Hour on Alternation Radio. All right, and welcome back to the Nerd Edification Hour here on Alternation Radio. I'm Jeremy, and to my left, I'm Rachel, and sitting across from us behind a scarf. Ah, is. yes, it's me, my <laughs> precious scarf. Hello. Yeah, Caleb is hiding behind the so scarf curtain. So, so okay, so okay. Oh, okay. We need to... Okay, he's a little too attached to the scarf. <laughs> yeah. So now, now we're going to actually have our nerd vocab. Yay. Um It yeah. is... Martian. And what does Martian mean, Jeremy? Of or relating to the planet Mars or its supposed inhabitants, a a hypothetical or fictional inhabitant of Mars. And do you know why we're talking about this? Um, Because we like The movie's coming out? Well, yes, that's true. (laughs) But more More importantly, importantly, um, potentially potentially life-giving... Potentially. Potentially. Potentially potentially life-giving water still flows... On Mars, which is a a jail. Across the ancient surface of Mars from time to time, according to NASA. Which is huge. Now, which is really huge, but in all honesty, it's probably A, it's probably not drinkable by no. humans at all. No, not. Mainly, well, it's one of those things where it has to be, it have to be filtered. Dirty. Yeah, it has water. That's yeah, the thing. it have to be is filtered it, a lot. Isn't Mars just basically like rust? It's like mm. red? Part of, part of it is from kind of that, from the uh, the oxide layer there. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but huh. so NASA yeah, scientists. Rust water, but. Yeah, NASA scientists said Monday in um, in revealing a potential breakthrough in both the search for life beyond Earth and human hopes to one day travel there. Uh, while the yeah, dis- the rust yeah. water. While Sorry. the discovery doesn't it doesn't by itself offer evidence of life on Mars, either past or present, it does boost hope that the harsh landscape still offers some refuge for microbes to cling to existence. Uh, the existence of liquid water, even if it is super salty, briny, gross water, <laughs> <Rest> uh, <laughs> gives the possibility that there is life on Mars in some form, uh, that we have a way to describe how it might survive, said John Grunsfield, Associate Administrator for the Science Mission Directorate at NASA. Um, now... This uh, being a Doctor Who, Who fan, this kind of scares me because if you ever saw the Water of Mars, what's well, that for us to drink? Special, it <laughs> oh bad. What Don't does... drink the water on Mars, oh. guys. Oh. Don't do it. Yeah, it's not that bad. <laughs> but, I mean, the fact that, like um, like a salt brine solution for water is quite conducive actually for things to live in and do. Yeah, but but it's rust water. Doesn't well, matter. We've got environments here with uh, it's a type of creature called an extremophobe. Oh yeah, the Which, little little sea, little water bears. You mean? Well, they can. Well, that's one of them. Yeah, you've seen it. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> they they can live in these really extreme conditions mm-hmm. and so forth. So, given that, that's actually not a bad place to look. So yeah, that's huge. Yeah, but you know, it's. It's kind of interesting that they decided to announce this so close to the Martian movie's release, but um, they did say that you know the you know the events in the film obviously aren't really possible at this point in time. Right. And concerning the water, in relation to that, is the uh, the character in the film wouldn't have been able to drink the water unless he had a really crazy filtration proce- pro- yeah. filtration process. Now, ironically, though, in the book. There was a few sciencey things kind of like that, and I think one of the NASA, the folks at NASA actually said in regards to the author, um, they said, you know, he could probably come up with something that could, you know, have, you know, a thought of Worked. working, <laughs> of actually working, which is kind of big coming from a NASA person. So, yeah. So, yeah, b- water on Mars, big news. Really you know, big news. Maybe one day, once we nuke Mars, we can Proving get all NASA's the ice, still around. ice caps still <laughs> warming up. You haven't heard that? That one dude, he um, he said we should nuke Mars, get it warmed up. I can't remember what it was. But, yeah, it's still a bad idea because the radioactive okay. ice. We're just like, okay, yeah, okay. sure. <laughs> Look it up. Nuking things is not the answer Nuking. for everything, people. <laughs> Other than microwaves, it doesn't work. Yeah. So, Jeremy, you're you're a big Android person. Let's hear about Google. I have an Android phone. 
Ah, well. <laughs> Google has announced a wide range of devices, including two new Nexus handsets, two new Chromecast devices, and the Pixel C at its event in San Francisco. The company has also launched the latest version of its Android operating system, Android 6.0 Marshmallow. What? Mm, delicious. Yes. Mm, yeah. Here are some of the highlights from the event. So wait, if we roast a phone, <laughs> will it taste like a marshmallow? Would be delicious. I don't know. Do you care to test it out? Uh, not I really. want to get a stay puff <laughs> case for a phone. Now I, I don't want a hundred dollar <laughs> plus stay marshmallow phone. Marshmallow. Yes, perfect. <laughs> yeah, that'd be like a hundred dollar plus marshmallow. F- yeah, who knows? To eat. Uh, Google has unveiled two new Nexus smartphones: the Nexus 6P and the Nexus 5X. Uh, the Nexus 5X and 6P come with fingerprint sensors, uh, which that's actually my Galaxy S5 has that, which is great. <laughs> Uh, the Nexus 5X is priced at 379 onwards, while the 6P is going to be priced at 499 Jeez, are we approaching why? Apple prices I now? I know, right? Like, why, who wants to buy a $500 phone, like, really? Why, Jeremy? Why? I did it. What if you drop it? This $500 I'll throw mine just, right now. I make sure those things are unbreakable. $500 you just dropped on the concrete. You just want to throw my phone now? No. <laughs> not at me, please. Uh, these are the first phones to come running Android 6.0 Marshmallow, which is the latest version of Android. I don't know if the, what phones that'll come out to for other ones, but these are the first ones that have it natively. The 5 X have a 5.2 inch display, the Nexus imprint fingerprint sensor, USB Type C charger, Ooh. which is one of the new ones where it's unidirect, it's uh, omnidirectional, so you cannot put it in backwards. Which uh, is so great because I have a problem with that. <laughs> it's, yeah. Oh yeah, trying to line up like the little plug because it's shaped. The like micros a- were annoying about that because yeah. you could. Jam it into the wrong way and break it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it will be available in three colors. Ooh. Oh, three colors. Three colors. Uh, black and okay, less Apple. dark black, and then <laughs> you say apples like darker black. Said white. Deal oh. with it. <laughs> or oh. gold. Pay us. Well, yeah, gold. Know. Pay us. No, they had that in the C. They had it in multiple colors. But That's anyway, true. yeah. Uh, the Nexus 6P is the first Nexus with an all-metal body case. Uh, 12.3 megapixel rear camera, 5.7 inch display, also has the imprint fingerprint sensor and the Type C connector. Okay, first they do stuff with like leather on the phones, and now <laughs> that they're was weird. That, it was weird. <laughs> I was I was kind of actually concerned for the phone a little bit because of that, but all metal. I mean, I guess that's cool. Yeah, that's, I mean they've had devices where it's kind of unibody or that's made out of a chunk of metal. Actually, Apple did that before. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. See, just just hope that a wire doesn't. Um get broken and then it's used yeah the whole body. that it's wouldn't be fun for anybody nope <laughs> uh, Nexus imprint lets you wake your phone unlock apps and breeze through checkout lines with just a touch so I guess it just uses the thumbprint and goes from there <clears throat> um, they're going to be available for pre-order now starting in the US UK oh. Ireland and Japan and, and if enough are pre-ordered you can get <laughs> extra apps the dialing ability oh, the dialing <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness guys so, so you have to tell your friends to pre-order the phone just the three of us if we pre-order it now we'll get the alarm clock <gasps> So the availability of the Nexus 5X and the Nexus 6P phones will be announced for more countries in the coming weeks. So, like I said, uh, let's see. Android 6.0 Marshmallow will begin rolling out to the Nexus 5, 6, 7, and 9. No 8, apparently. Because 7, 8, 9. Uh, (laughs) This is the non-violent version because there's no 8. Nexus Player as well is getting it. It's a whole little lovely list here. Hmm. Uh, new features in Android 6.0 Marshmallow will include faster access to voice action, uh, charging speed indicator, new window animations, improved heads-up hmm. notifications, fast scrolling and search on the home screen, and runtime permissions. We'll basically, you know, ask only when you use a feature. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Google announces Google Play Music Family Plan. It's fourteen ninety nine per month, up to six mo- six members for six months. There's a lot we, of music we, plans. Wow, lately. that's actually not a bad. You know, that's actually not a bad idea. But I'm just saying, what if they had, do they have family plans for like games and stuff? What if they had that? So like you could monitor. Sure. No, I don't know. I I just figured it'd be a good idea. I'm trying to throw out ideas because I know people. True. Last few things in here. Uh, For Android, Chromecast for photos will roll out this week. It's coming very soon to iOS. I guess they're kind of spreading a little bit over that way. How much more can you do with photos exactly? You can do a lot, trust me. Do a lot with photos. Oh, okay. Excuse me. Uh, Google announces two new Chromecast devices, the new Chromecast and the Chromecast Audio, both devices priced at $35 and available now. Is that like a a book tablet thing? No, Chromecast is like it's a USB kind of stick thing. It's that an plugs. HDMI. That's it, the weird thing. Yeah. It, uh, well, whatever. It plugs into the TV and um, it's, I guess... It's basically a streaming device. You can hook up your phone, tablet, or other things and tell it to play something and it'll send it to it and mm-hmm. display it on the TV. It'll run basic apps and so forth. Um, these are probably just faster, a little better working versions. The audio one's interesting, so I wonder how that's... It's probably just going to be for music, I imagine. Which 
I mean, the normal Chromecast could do it. It's not yeah. like if you can do HD video, but, but music if, should be well under yeah. your belt. But what if you <laughs> didn't want to do video and you just wanted to do music? Like, I guess I can see this being useful for um, anyone that does like dance events in that they can just instead of lugging around a giant laptop everywhere, they can just hook up their phone or their tablet to their Chromecast, hook it up to a TV in wherever they are, and boom, you well, got it. Audio it may not even require a TV. It could yeah. just be a wireless sync like, up to yeah. your audio. Plug it in the wall or something. I don't know. Right? Yeah. We'll have to find out. We'll I have, have no idea. Yeah. They're no available idea. now, well, so well, have to look yeah. Why don't you go test that for us, Rachel? Once I'll be back. Double your job. What? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna in, look it up. You I know, guess. I'm here oh. late. I'm just gonna leave early. <laughs> <laughs> it's my Friday. <laughs> well, All right. tell us a little bit more about the like the Oculus and VR stuff, Caleb, and I'll uh, actually I'm going to look up this Chromecast audio thing for us. Yeah, you Yay. do that. So Samsung will be selling a consumer version of Oculus rift uh, virtual reality headset for 99 dollars later this fall giving users the ability to dive deeper into vr games and 360 degree uh, video experiences which are quite a new thing they're popping up everywhere mm -hmm. the upcoming gear vr headset will work with more smartphones including the samsung's galaxy's note 5 galaxy s6 edge plus there's a plus in there s6 and s6 edge and their super a mold AMOLED. 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 Uh, displays give uh, users a richer virtual reality experience. Mm. Uh, the company said in a September 25th announcement. So that was a little while ago. Kind of a smaller virtual reality one. So I, I still can't, like, I, I'm not on the virtual reality hype train. I've got one. I know, but I I'm not it. on the hype train. It's just like, I don't, I don't... It, 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 it doesn't appeal to me, really. Like, you know, I mean, it'd be cool to experience, but I mean, to, to actually be in the middle one, of a, I mean, to be in one of these, like, in, in an area and actually be able to in, interact with it and see it with your periphery and your full vision to move around through it. I mean, it's huge how much different it is. Even for something, instead of just seeing a flat image on the screen, you feel much more like you're actually in it. Well, yeah. when we're able to touch it, then then I'm gonna then I'm gonna be even more interested. Things well, I mean that's like saying, well, I don't want to play video <laughs> games because I see it on a flat screen. And I can't touch it. I'm just hitting a button. Yeah, but I, mean, I know you still can do a lot of that. But like, I've got games where I can play it. I'm using a controller to move around, and I even have a motion one where I can move in and do things like that. But at any time, I don't have to worry about a camera. I just look around. So I know they're starting to come out with these 360 degree movies, and the I know Warcraft trailer was one of them. Yeah, I actually watched that. I mean, it's pretty cool, but what if, like, they do, like, the mainstream movies? Like, if we do Marvel movies and you're just kind of, like, you in know, the middle of this You know, I can see that. I can see thing. this sort of thing definitely going beyond gaming and that it comes becomes a 360 movie thing. Like, oh, can I mean, you I've, imagine? Can I've you already imagine, seen it. I know, but can you imagine actually going to a movie theater where you sit down in the chair and a little thing goes over your eyes and, oh, I feel very, very sorry for the people oh, with Oh, yeah, like the people who have yeah, motion um, sickness and stuff? Well, I that can would see not that be able to a, do that at all. And So do you but, think 2D? screens like we have now will still be around oh yeah it's not, gonna, it's not gonna go oh, away they're not gonna that. go away just like cds won't go away well cds aren't away they're still yeah, they're being still sold here. it's just oh, like people well. thought tv would kill radio uh, and or, or phone look at us. Or look phone where, where we are. <laughs> well, actually, I have an update on the Chromecast audio. So oh. it's same circular design, same micro circular. USB. Circular? They didn't have a circular. It is. It's a circular design, nice. same micro USB power source, um, only instead of connected HDMI dongle, we've got a couple of inches of 3.5 millimeter audio ca ca ah. cable. The gist is this. You plug in your Chromecast audio into a power source and also into your receiver's aux input. Mm -hmm or directly into a speaker itself via the 3.5 millimeter jack. Then you'll set it up using the new Chromecast app available mm -hmm. on your phone or tablet. You can then cast into it like you would a standard Chromecast, except this time it'll just be the audio, whether that's from Spotify, Google Play Music, or just a tab you have open on your computer or your phone. Yep. So it's pretty... Pretty much what we were thinking it would be. Yeah, and nice. if you have multiple Chromecast audios, you can pick and choose where the music's going. Yep. So that's actually kind. That's actually kind of cool. So you can have one set up for like an outside, one for inside, and kind of change the music between the two environments on your phone. Yeah, I'd, control I think, the party. I think that's pretty cool, though. 
So we got about five minutes left. Uh, Rachel, why don't you go ahead and tell us what's going on? Speaking of virtual reality, what's the last thing? Okay, so the Oculus co-founder and VP of product, Nate Mitchell, during a talk with PC Gamer said that um, he says what's he, what he thinks about all day long is user experience. Um, and he says, so if I'm going to promise something and you're going to hand me a significant amount of money or whatever it is, we all... Um, we all know it's going to be at least $300. If you're going to hand me $300 today, I am not going to be excited to tell you, okay, in 9, 10, 12, 11 months, whatever it is, you're going to get something in return. The longer you wait, the more you're like, this is obnoxious. We've heard previously that the Rift, which I... Um, Oculus Rift is what I have. Mm-hmm. Which... which uh, that the Rift is going to launch with a $300-ish price. But... Now we now as they get closer to the official quarter one 2016 launch, the 300 price was kind of nice to hear that mm-hmm. it's 300. It hasn't raised any at yeah. all. So if you need a new PC and want to secure yourself an Oculus ready PC, you can actually spend less than a thousand to prepare yourselves, plus the 300 for the Rift itself when it launches early next year. So that's kind of cool that it's yeah, for going those to be like jeremy who are like yeah but jeremy already has one so yeah. well, I, have, I have a first generation i mean to put it in, to put it in perspective um i was given mine originally by palmer lucky but the going rate at the time was about a thousand dollars yeah to actually be able to get one of the the first dev kits that i've got which was the lower resolution original one and they've had other models since then but to actually keep it down three hundred dollars is not that bad i mean i have a watch i bought this weekend i really like that was 200 bucks so, you know, for a full set, I think it comes with um, like an Xbox One controller and mm-hmm. some other stuff with it as well. So you're not just getting the headset. And a lot of people kind of freaked out about the, you know, $1,000 range for a computer. That's actually pretty common with some of the, the bigger ones. And a lot of people no, yeah, that are going to do this already have computers that will run it. Yeah, I can run it just fine on what I've already got. And you know what? If you keep an eye on like um, sites like Tiger Direct and Newegg, they have running sales that um, have – that these so these the sales actually encom- encompass making making putting me preparing yeah. yourself basically for this. if you want to save so, money with a gaming rig do like you're supposed to have a nerd that's your friend we'll make something a lot exactly. cheaper than what you'd expect i'm your friend i'm everybody's <laughs> friend exactly so you just got to watch the sales and you'll be fine you might actually end up spending less than a thousand right so so that's all and yes it is now it's time for social plugins Check us out uh, on Twitter, like at Strangely Entertaining. That's where I do the stuff and things. Mm-hmm. I, I, I thought it was at Nerd Edification on at Twitter. At Nerd Edification. I'm sorry. Strangely Entertaining, Strange is, Entertaining, the Entertaining is the YouTube. Which it is. Capital is. S, capital E. It's all one word. Look it up or just look up Nerd Edification Hour. Facebook page. You can just look up the Nerd Edification Hour. Rachel mostly runs that. Um, and then uh, Jeremy has And his you can little... find me on Twitter over at Zenspath, Z E N S. P A T H, and then our YouTube page is Zen's Path C O M because you can't put the period in there. Nope. So you can also find us on Facebook at Zen's Path. Basically, just look for us on there. And that will pretty <laughs> much do it here on the Nerd Edification Hour on Alternation Radio. Thank you for listening or watching, whichever you are doing right now. And I just I want to say you're all awesome. Yeah. You're very awesome. You guys are great. Yeah. Yay. Yay. And until next week. Stay fancy. What are we playing, though? Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> There's the Zero Two boss battle from Kirby uh, 64. All right. Beautiful. Yeah. Now this is really goodbye. All right. Bye. Bye. Peace.